Safety is the number one core value at Granite Rock. It makes sense when you consider that many of the jobs performed here, including construction, mining, and trucking, are among the most hazardous in the United States. The risk of experiencing a serious or fatal injury while performing these jobs is a very real possibility. In an effort to reduce this risk, Granite Rock's insurance partner reviewed several years of data to identify the causes of on-the-job injuries and fatalities. They found 12 common causes behind these incidents. Granite Rock fine-tuned that list to better fit our hazardous exposures. These common causes are known as the 12 life-saving habits. As a Granite Rock team member, you play a major role in making Granite Rock a safe place to work. By striving to develop and maintain safe work practices associated with the 12 life-saving habits, you can reduce your own risk of a serious or fatal injury, as well as risks to other team members. Begin with your Safe Start training. This training increases your awareness of how the four states of rushing, frustration, fatigue and complacency can lead you to make a critical error. These errors include your mind or eyes not on task, getting in the line of fire, or potentially losing your balance, traction, or grip. These mistakes can get you hurt on or off the job, including while driving. Safe Start is the number one life-saving habit. The key to making Safe Start work for you is to practice, practice, practice. Self-triggering and working on habits to prevent complacency can start at home and carry through to your arrival at each job site. When I arrive at the plant, the first thing I do is think safe start and self-trigger. Just like I shouldn't be rushing and shouldn't get frustrated, I don't want to be complacent either and think, hey, I come here every day. What could be different today? Instead, I scope out the site for possible hazards. Since I need to do some maintenance on that oil tank, I can see four areas of risk. There's a lockout tagout life-saving habit for any lines, pumps, and valves associated with that tank. I'll be entering a confined space, the tank itself, to work on the heating coils, so another opportunity to practice a life-saving habit. Plus, I'm seeing the fall potential for the driver checking the contents of his tanker. And I'll be working in proximity to that tanker, so I want to be sure the driver knows I'm here. Four potential areas of risk, four opportunities to practice your life-saving habits. Let's start with working in proximity to mobile equipment and traffic. Life-saving habit number 12. Since I'm going to be crossing behind this tanker, I'll get the driver's attention so that he's aware of my presence in case he needs to move the truck. I can see that James is using the proper equipment by having the pop-up railings in place. This protects him from a fall working at heights of six feet and above. Lockout, tagout, verify. Life-saving habit number two is next up. This process separates you from danger such as electricity, pressure, and other forms of hazardous energy. Earlier, I shut down the lines leading to the tank and shut off the valves so that the heating coils could cool. I'm now going to verify that all hazardous energy sources are locked out and that the equipment will not operate before I begin work. The fourth life-saving habit in this work site is confined space entry. Confined spaces include tanks and pipes that could be dangerous. You must be trained to enter a permit-required confined space, and your name must be on the permit to enter. Even if I've worked within a space a thousand times, I still read the permit as if it's my first time. And it's always at least a two-person operation. A trained attendant must be on the outside if I'm inside. Critical to confined spaces is that you stop work immediately if instructed to do so and perform gas or atmospheric testing as required. Not all work sites present the same hazards or the same opportunities to practice all of your life-saving habits, but nearly all jobs put you in proximity to equipment. It's just the equipment that changes. Hundreds of workers are killed each year by coming into contact with mobile equipment. The main causes of death are struck by, run over, and caught in between. The quarry, for example, has all types of equipment, big equipment, posing serious risks of injury or even death. There are a lot of opportunities to get hurt out here. That's why I'm always heads up. 
Today I need to troubleshoot a light on that conveyor over there. So what do I see? This can also be a busy traffic area, including trucks and loaders. Since I'll be working on the light, I need to lock out and tag out that circuit. Because I'm going to use the aerial lift to access the fixture, I'm going to be working at a height of over six feet. That means I'll need to use fall protection equipment. But first, I have to check out that aerial lift. It looks like it has a do not operate tag, which means bringing in another lift. Life-saving habit number three is safe equipment operation. Do not operate equipment that has been removed from service, has not been inspected, or you've not been trained to use. My lucky day, the lift just went through maintenance and is cleared for service. That means I can do my pre-op inspection and get started after I lock out, tag out the circuit. So once I've verified the lockout tag out, I can grab my safety gear for working above six feet. In addition to my normal PPE, I have a harness and I'm going to tie into the aerial lift via a lanyard. Training at heights to work outside of the handrail system, you must inspect your fall protection equipment. Always tie off to an approved anchorage point and always have a rescue plan. Being aware of hazards associated with moving equipment is just as critical while working in our building materials yards. And remember, not everyone in the yard is a Granite Rock team member trained on the 12 life-saving habits. Some are customers. Practicing life-saving habit number 12, working around mobile equipment and traffic, includes wearing a high visibility safety vest and getting the attention of all operators. I work this yard every day but a lot of the vehicles here belong to our customers. That's why it's critical that I understand the hazards not only to me, but to them as well. So what do I see? Besides trucks, there are also forklifts and other vehicles moving around. So there are lots of opportunities to be working in close proximity to equipment. Making sure all loads are secure before they leave the yard is critical to our customers and the public safety. And speaking of loads and trucks, I will be working around suspended loads. Here, I can also see that this yard has overhead power lines. That's a hazard I take note of whenever I'm in that part of the yard. Avoiding contact with utilities is life-saving habit number 11. Overhead power lines are not something you'll find on all job sites, but where they are present, they're especially hazardous because they carry extremely high voltage. Fatal electrocution is the main risk, but severe burns is another potential outcome. Where there is a risk of equipment contacting overhead power lines on job sites, danger overhead power line signs are posted. When necessary, take protective measures like shutting off the power or insulating the lines. I just assume all overhead power lines are energized at lethal voltages and stay at least 20 feet away. Typically, I'm out here working my forklift and helping load materials into trucks, our trucks or our customers' trucks. That means I'm working with suspended loads, a lot. I have to be eyes on task at all times, not just for other vehicles, but also people walking around the yard. I want them to see me and not pass in front of me, but also that they do not work or even walk under a suspended load. A suspended load is an object that is temporarily lifted and hangs above the ground Practicing life-saving habit number seven will protect you from this line of fire hazard. While not practical with moving forklifts, where possible, mark the unsafe area and put barriers in place where a suspended load will take place. Never enter the area without authorization from the person in charge or a flagman if present. I'm always concerned with protecting and properly securing all loads and materials. I don't want something to fly out between here and wherever I or my customer is headed. I inspect all materials and equipment to make sure it won't move. I'll check for distribution as well and make any necessary adjustments. And I'll double check the securement devices like binder straps or cargo nets to make sure they're installed properly too. Many Granite Rock team members don't work in the same location every day. Those that work in our construction division, for example, work on many different job sites over the course of their career, or sometimes from one day to the next. Every day in the field is different. So I always stop and take a moment when I arrive on a job site, or even when I return from lunch, to 
to survey the site for potential hazards. For example, on this job, we're trenching, so that's a specific risk. There are overhead power lines I need to be aware of, and two potential line of fire hazards being crushed or caught in between. And there are definitely going to be suspended loads. In addition to life-saving habit number seven, do not work under a suspended load, the other line of fire hazard is number five. Be aware of all swinging and caught in between situations where you could be blindsided, crushed, or pinned. Identifying the potential swing radius and caught in between areas must be done during the task analysis process. Barricade areas to prevent entry when necessary. Make contact with operators before moving in or around equipment and be on the lookout for changing conditions. And besides the power lines, the trench we're digging, while well, not deeper than five feet, can still pose a safety risk. The greatest risk in trenches is cave-ins, but other things could happen, including falling into the trench or something falling on us while we're in the trench. Life-saving habit number 10 is specifically related to how you protect yourself while working in an unprotected trench or excavation deeper than five feet or less depending on conditions. In addition to understanding protective systems and practices, all team members must also know that the competent person has done an inspection and noted that the trench or excavation is safe. Granite Rock truck drivers use safe driving habits, number eight on our list. It goes without saying that I'm going to obey all traffic laws. It's the folks that don't that worry me. That's why I drive defensively and avoid anything that could distract me from my focus on driving. The same rules apply when I'm driving a mixer or my personal vehicle with other precious cargo. Everybody is seat belted in. I stay at or below the maximum speed limit for the vehicle I'm driving and only use my phone in an emergency and then only hands free. I mean, what did we do before cell phones? Wearing a seatbelt while the vehicle is in motion and not following too closely behind the vehicle in front of you are two parts of life-saving habit number eight. Texting of any kind is strictly prohibited. Don't read or send a text while driving. And of course, adjust your speed as needed based on traffic and road conditions. Those are the 12 life-saving habits. Practice these habits, make them part of your life, on and off the job, and you'll reduce your risk and that of your team members of making a critical error that could lead to a serious or potentially fatal injury. Safety before all else, it's at the top of our core values for a reason. That reason is you.